Good morning. Welcome to DIY. We'll see. It's time for my next project. And I am doing something that I've always, always, always wanted to do. And now that we have our own home, I finally get to do it. And it is build a... Build. Create a Harry Potter guest room. Like a full-on Harry Potter experience. I want the room to look like Hogwarts. Like you're actually there. And, and just make it an experience that even adults are going to, you know want to be part of at least the Harry Potter fan adults. I have a healthy obsession with it. Healthy as in I have read all the books multiple times, um, but I don't quite, you know, practice. <laughs> practice the spells in my free time. Um, not the Harry Potter spells anyway. So I'm in the guest room. And let me show you around. This is <laughs> like my version of Coffee Walk only. Instead of cool Jeeps, I get to show you another destructive part of my house. I am in the guest room. And it is small. This is a small-ass guest room. As you can see. It's kind of full of stuff at the moment. It's not even that much stuff, but it looks like it takes up the whole room. So, because it is smaller, I decided to use part of the closet. The closet is a decent size. Um, so, what I'm doing is cutting where the door was in half. And then we're going to use that section as the closet. And the other part, I'm just going to open up. So, I took the drywall off last night. First time removing uh, a wall. And it was kind of fun. So right now, um, that is not a load bearing wall. So what I'm going to do is remove this and this and that, and then this, and I'm going to cut these two beams in half and extend another one all the way down. So that, so really I'm probably just going to move this one over so that it, it has the support here in the middle and, um, and then I'll have this open section where I can put the fireplace and maybe a seating area. The problem is that I'm going to have to use, because when we have our kids come and stay, we're, I'm going to have to use a full-size bed, which is going to take up most of the room. So the idea is plaster brick. I'm going to reshape the window so that it looks like one of the Harry Potter windows using foam and drywall and wood and plaster and then plaster. I'm going to create a hidden door that'll lead to the closet. I've opened that up and the idea is on this side to create the wooden door that you would see in Hogwarts and on this side to create platform nine and three quarters. I haven't quite figured out. I've got a couple ideas, but I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do yet. So that's the walkthrough. It's my ideas. Um, the plastering itself is going to take a long time. So I'm probably not going to film for too much of that since I've covered it already. But I'll give you a general idea of what I'm doing. And then I created, just like with my office, my Lord of the Rings office, um, I created a brick um, stamp so that I'll have the same size brick all throughout the house. And it looks about the size that it was at Hogwarts. So we shall see. So if you're looking for a demonstration on how I'm doing the plaster for the Harry Potter room. I'm going to show you. I briefly went over this when I did my office, but in case you haven't watched that video. You have your prepped plaster. It's wet. It's messy. Put down a tarp, especially if you're working with a wood floor. I didn't in my office because it was tile. It cleans up pretty easily with just like warm water, but in here it's a wood floor, so I'm trying not to mess it up. Um, so you just get a fair amount onto your trough, 
By the way, I'm using metal. This is metal. Um, and since the plaster is wet, it rusts easily, um, which is fine. I just clean off the rust and I don't care if it's in the plaster because it's getting painted. If, however, you want to use plaster and you don't want to paint over it um, because the color of the rust sometimes shows up in there, you might want to use a plastic piece of this. Anyway, so get a generous amount of plaster, put it on the wall, and just like my office, I do not want this to be perfectly flat because I want it to have a natural texture and I want the brick to look real. So I'm not going for perfectly flat. Like I said, it gets all over the place, so especially when you use a lot. I'm just gonna do this section of the wall and then bust out my brick tool and show you how to do that. You don't have to rush to do the stamping because it takes this quite a while to dry, depending, especially depending on how thick you make it. Um, this is, I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch thick, if even that. It's probably a lot less than that. But um, it still takes, so it's, this is probably going to take probably three or four hours, even most of the night to dry. So. You don't have to rush to do the stamp. You could probably honestly um, put plaster on the whole wall and then go over and start the stamp. But for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna do it now. So my stamp is this <laughs> and this. <laughs> There's a piece of wood with two other pieces of wood and another piece of wood and a pencil, which <laughs> piece of wood. So, I got the sponsors lined up. Um, you want to make sure it's even, so just make sure it's all the way up against the wall and make sure the lines are straight and then I go in after I do the straight lines um, draw it out and then I go in and just kind of fix it a little bit. So, a little too short for this, but I'm going to go ahead and cut it in.
figured it out. It's a brick. And I'm sure I'll do a couple more touch-ups just because I'm like that. Yes, this takes a very long time. Um, so <laughs> just be prepared for it to take a long time. Um, and this is the process. So do this to all of the walls and it doesn't have to be brick. Like you see the door, I'm also filling in plaster, but that's going to look more like wood, um, like an old wood with really deep grooves in it. So it's the beauty of plaster. It can be whatever you want it to be. So that's it. Do this to all the walls and then move on to the next part. Show you progress. I finished. Let's get the cat. I finished the wall. As you can see behind me, that used to be the left hand side used to be a closet door or opening to a closet door, and uh, I built a section of a wall here, and then I go around. I built another wall back here, so it closed off the closet. It's still a decent size. I'm trying to like. It's still a decent size. Um, now what I want to do is put in, before I finish plastering this side, I want to put in a secret door. I want to be able to push in on the secret door and slide it over. I do have a door that, that went here, but it's part of the double doors for the, the closet, and I might be able to use those elsewhere. I hate to split up the doors because they're decent. Um, so I'm just going to build a door. Um, out of stuff that I have lying around. I'm gonna MacGyver a door to go in this section and then figure out how to build some sort of mechanism that I can push it back. I think what I could do is just build um, kind of like an L shape and then a smaller box to go inside and put dowels on the top and wheels on the bottom and that should be able to push it in and slide it over. The whole uh, goal is just to not mess up the plaster, make it so that um, we can push on it and it's not gonna screw up the decorative part. And I may have to go over this with another layer of plaster as well because it's kind of showing. Um, so that's the progress. And then this, I was wrong when I did the first part of this video. I think this is actually a load-bearing wall. Um, this is part of what happens when you don't want to pay somebody who actually does this professionally to come in and look. I didn't think it was, but then I went out to Google and it kind of looks like what a load bearing wall looks like. So it's fine because I really, I just shifted a beam from here to here and that weight transition really isn't going to have any effect on it. So I'm going to leave the supporting beams up and I think I'm going to turn them into what you see in the Gryffindor common room, which is you see those big exposed beams everywhere. And so I'm going to make that look like an exposed beam, and then I'm going to build a fireplace into the back, um, back there. Now that I have this space, it's the goal is to kind of treat it almost like a common room area, whereas you have a fireplace back there, maybe a little chair right here, um, and I still have enough room in the rest of the room to build the. What am I going to call it? Full bed, full size bed, and then have the dog chest over there. So. That's the progress. I like now how the door goes. This room is a chaotic mess and there is stuff everywhere. So I'm not gonna show you the whole thing. <laughs> Just kind of what I've done so far. I finished one wall, two walls and my half closet. So as you can see, the half closet is, is, this used to be all closet, now it's half closet. So you come around here and we have our Gryffindor fireplace and the Gryffindor um, emblem, logo, maybe one, carved in here with plaster. And if you look over here, there is a kind of hidden door. I say kind of because you can kind of tell the store, but you kind of can't because it opens up into your closet, which hasn't been plastered yet. And 
I've got a lot to finish there, but it's a hidden door. Just in case you are under the impression that it's okay to have a couple beers or a glass of wine and do this. <laughs> it's almost embarrassing to show this. Don't. <laughs> this is where I made the line. This is where the line actually is supposed to be. I gotta fix this whole wall. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you think you're, you're okay, you're not okay. <laughs> Don't drink in plaster. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> so this is one of those times when I really don't know what I'm doing. I haven't figured out how I'm going to do it yet. I want to reshape this window so that it's it looks like the ones at Hogwarts. So it comes up... Um, to a point at the top. The materials I have are styrofoam, I have wood, I have sheetrock, nails, screws, glue, so I should be able to make it work with what I have here. What I think I'm going to do is do several layers of this foam um, glued together, stacked on top of each other, and then I'm going to shape it with that and then around on either side of the foam I'm going to use this thin pliable wood and then I'll plaster on top of that. That's what I think I'm going to do. I'm not sure it's going to work but let's see. Harry Potter room, day 6042, <laughs> it's been a long time. I am finally at the point that I get to paint. I have all of the walls done. And I cleaned up the floor a little bit. It's gonna look much better when it's done. I have fireplace done and the plaster in the closet is still drying. So I'm probably not gonna paint that today. Um, I promise it'll look much better when it's all painted and the built-in shelves. Oh, um, it'll look like snow up there. Time to paint. Step one of painting done. And it looks kind of pink, but there's like six other colors going over the top of it. So this is just the base coat. And my husband also installed the new chandelier, which is probably going to get moved up a little bit. It's really cool. It doesn't put up any light though. But see, I mean, once it's dark in here, that's going to look awesome. And um, uh, both of us were worried about that. We got, I got the fireplace insert for the fireplace. Um, but we were both worried about the, the heat. So we put, I put stones there on the bottom or papers that will actually um, allow the fireplace insert to sit on top of it. And now I don't have to worry about burning the house down. But as you can see, everything has the first layer of paint. So now it's step two and start making it look, you know, real.
was going to build a Harry Potter bed, the ones like they sleep in at Hogwarts. Um, however, due to the time constraints of this project and the price of lumber, I decided to find a, a bed that was pre-made, a four-poster bed, which surprisingly looks pretty similar to the one at, at Hogwarts with the exception of a few just small corrections. So this is the bed. Um, it was a four poster bed and it's a little different, but I'm making some adjustments like the planks at the top. You can see the, the rods on the inside where the curtains will get hung from. Um, so I'm adding, I'm trying to make the top look pretty similar to the one I'd probably be missing the very the lip on the very top, but and now I'm I'm sanding it down and I'm going to mildly reshape and then paint it to match the beam and the shelf in the closet. And hopefully this will be done quickly. Because I'm running out of time. license and working on this room at the same time. This has become a very long project. Uh, this is the most, this is the, the, probably one of the most time consuming parts of it now that I'm down to the details, the tiny details. Uh, I'll give you an overview of this particular project. It was one of those stacked book um, lamps. So it had just a regular metal thing and a lampshade and a regular bulb. Uh, I took off the lampshade and I cut off the, um, the excess metal pieces that hold the lampshade on. Um, I know you don't have to cut that off. You can take the whole cord out and do it the hard way, but I did it the easy way and I cut it off. And then I got a round piece of PVC pipe because I wanted this to look like a candle sitting on the books. I got a round piece of PVC pipe and I put it over the top. And this is going to be plugged into a, um, a smart plug. So that all I have to do is tell Alexa to light the room up. And she just came on. Um, and she'll light it up. So I was able to leave it in the on position and then put the PVC pipe over so I don't have to turn it on and off anymore. And then I covered that in a uh, uh, tape that used to patch walls and you, you put the tape over it and then you put um, putty or whatever over the top of it. So I put that tape around the PVC pipe to cover the crack and then I put plaster over the top of that and then <clears throat> sanded it and formed it and molded it so that it looks like uh, wax. And now I am because this was pretty old and in rough shape, but still kind of in its base condition. Now I am painting each of the books and I'm going to try to make them look a little more realistic and then I'm going to name them um, after I'm going to retitle them the books that you would find in Hogwarts, the, the school books. And I have another one of these. It's not, it's not a lamp, but I've found these all the different times. I've been collecting all of this stuff for just years. And finally have the place to put it. But I have this other one that I got. I think it used to be um, a, a bottle of some sort because it's got a section there where I put the necklace. Um, that There was a cork. So I don't know. I don't know what was in here. It could have been cologne. It could have been alcohol something, but it's actually a, a jar, um, but it's got an owl on the top of it, so I'm going to do the same thing with those books, and the owl looks like Hedwig, so I left out there, and this is just going to take a while, because I guess it's going to take a while, it's a little detailed, but um, I think it came out pretty cool, and it'll make a really good addition 
to the room and it'll give a little more light because the bulbs that I bought for the chandelier really they look great but they're useless there's no light coming out of those at all so I need some extra light in here and right now I have a work light shining over here um, other than that it would be pitch dark in here to not in the fireplace so yep that's what I'm doing that's that's today's project <laughs>